The Democratic Leader. I ask unanimous consent the quorum be dispensed with. Without objection. Uh, Mr. President, I rise this, <coughs> this afternoon on a few topics. First, on the investigation into the Trump campaign's potential ties to Russia. This is a matter of such gravity we need to get it right. There should be no doubt about the integrity and impartiality of the investigation, either in the executive branch, where the FBI and Department of Justice are looking into it, or in Congress, where the intelligence committees of both chambers are conducting an investigation. Unfortunately, the House Intelligence Committee has come under a cloud of suspicion and partisanship. A few months ago, Chairman Nunez spoke to reporters at the request of the White House to tamp down stories on the links between the Trump campaign and Russia, which is exactly what his committee must now investigate. This past week, Chairman Nunez broke with committee process and tradition to brief the President on information he learned but hadn't yet shared with the committee. Now we learn this morning that Chairman Nunez was at the White House a day before that event. Doing what? We don't know. Mr. President, it could very well be the case that Chairman Nunez was briefing members of the administration about an investigation of which they are the subject. Chairman Nunez is falling down on the job and seems to be more interested in protecting the president than in seeking the truth. <coughs> you cannot have the person in charge of an impartial investigation be partial to one side. It's an inherent contradiction. And it undermines decades of bipartisan cooperation on the Intelligence Committee which handles such sensitive information paramount to national security. It undermines Congress as a co-equal branch of government, meant to hold the executive branch accountable for its actions. And it corrodes the American people's confidence in our government. Mr. President, if Speaker Ryan wants the House to have a credible investigation, he needs to replace Chairman Nunez. Congress was meant by the framers to be separate and equal, and I sincerely worry that under his direction, Mr. Nunez is pushing the committee into a direction of obsequiousness, and not one that is asking the hard questions and getting the important answers. There's always been a grand tradition of bipartisanship on the intelligence committees. When members go into the skiff, the room where they get secure briefings, they check their partisanship at the door. Chairman Nunez is right on the edge of doing permanent damage to that grand tradition of bipartisanship. Chairman Nunez seems to be more of a partisan for the president than an impartial actor. He has not been cooperating like someone who was interested in getting to the unvarnished truth. His actions look like those of someone who is interested in protecting the president and his party, and that doesn't work when the goal of the committee is to investigate Russia and its connection to the president and his campaign. Without further ado, Speaker Ryan should replace Chairman Nunez. Now, Mr. President, on another matter, the failure of Trump care. This past Friday was a good day for the American people. We can finally put to bed the disaster of a bill that was Trump Care, which would have resulted in spottier coverage, 24 million fewer Americans with health coverage, and higher costs, premiums, and deductibles for the middle class, the working poor, and older Americans, all to finance close to $600 billion in tax breaks for wealthy Americans. Americans should breathe a sigh of relief that Trump care will not become law. We're happy that it's gone. We can finally move on. And as I've said many times, we Democrats, provided our Republican colleagues drop replace and stop undermining the ACA, we're willing to work with our Republican friends to improve the existing law. 
No one ever said the Affordable Care Act was perfect. We have ideas to improve it. Hopefully, our colleagues on the Republican side do as well. I hope once replace is dropped and the ACA is no longer undermined by the administration, we can sit down and talk about them. But unfortunately, the administration has already done several things that undermine the law and hurt the people. During the final weeks of open enrollment, the Trump administration discontinued the public advertising campaigns that encourage people to sign up for insurance. The administration is working behind the scenes to give insurers flexibility to offer Americans less coverage for the health care they need. And the executive order that President Trump issued directing agencies to facilitate the repeal and replacement of ACA has destabilized the marketplace. Now that Trump care is off the table, the president should rescind the executive order. Today, I'm urging the president and his entire administration to immediately cease all efforts to undermine the ACA. People's lives are at stake. The president should not hope that the health care system for tens of millions explodes. He should not want premiums to go up on his watch. He should not hope the, that Americans lose treatment for opioid addiction on his watch. This approach is wrong, and wrong in two ways. First and foremost, it's wrong because it hurts people. The president must be a leader. It is not leadership for the president to hurt people and actively work to undermine our nation's health care system simply because he's angry that he didn't get his way on repealing the ACA. That's not presidential, that's petulance. And secondly, this approach won't work politically. Donald Trump is no longer an outsider. He's president. The American people are looking to him to help solve their problems. If he doesn't, it's going to hurt him and his party. Pointing the finger of blame isn't going to solve anyone's problems. That strategy is not only bad for the American people and beneath the presidency, it will backfire politically. He's in charge. People want him to make their lives better, not make them worse because of some political anger or vendetta. Now, I know many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle do care deeply about fixing the nation's health care problems. And we're ready to do that with them in a bipartisan way. But of course, repeal must be taken off the table, and the president must stop hurting citizens by undermining the Affordable Care Act. Finally, on tax issues. Mr. President, now that the jig is finally up on health care, our Republican friends have signaled they will turn to taxes. I hope they have learned the lessons of Trump Care. One of the reasons that Trump Care failed so spectacularly was because Republicans tried to rush and ram it through via a reconciliation process, even though it was deeply unpopular with the public. The last poll showed only 17% of Americans supported Trump care, so that means a large number of even Trump supporters were opposed to it. Why was it so unpopular? Probably because Trump care would have given the wealthiest among us a monster tax cut while hammering older Americans in the middle class with higher costs for less care. So I would say to my friends on the other side of the aisle, if you try to pass a Republican tax plan using the same reconciliation method in order to get a huge tax break for the wealthy and already profitable and powerful corporations, it'll fail. The American people are not crying out for tax breaks on the wealthiest Americans. God bless the wealthy. They're doing just fine without the tax breaks. But thus far, it seems our Republican colleagues are headed in that direction. Even though the president campaigned as a populist, his administration has been all hard right, pro-corporate, pro-special interest, totally against the working people. If the president and Republicans in Congress continue in that direction, proposing policies that shift burdens off the wealthy and powerful and 
not aim to help the middle class and working families, their efforts will continue to fail. And it will return tax reform into a partisan issue. The White House says tax reform isn't partisan, but it surely will be if they only propose massive tax cuts for the wealthy. And my prediction, if Republicans go down that road, the Republican tax scheme will, make, will meet the same fate as Trump care. I hope they won't go down that road. I hope they won't. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor and uh, note the absence of a quorum.